Which sweep is more surprising to you as we sit here today on April 17th, Year of Our Lord 2019? It, it takes something special for me not to answer with the team that's won the cup twice in the last three years. <laughs> like. You yeah. know what I mean? You know what? As I asked the question, I thought it was obvious it's the Lightning. But as you say, yes, the Penguins have been there, done that, like, and you expected more out of them. It, it's, it's quite the gravitational pull, continuing the space theme we've established, for me not to go directly to Pittsburgh right. as much as I love defensively what the Islanders are doing. The black and yellow hole. The black and yellow hole. Tampa Bay, though. But, like, I, I'm, I'm looking at that team. This, this is beyond what... This is the most confusing thing I think we've ever seen in the NHL because this team won two series a year ago. Yes. This is not some new kid on the block outfit who's getting a taste of the postseason for the first time. There are guys on that roster who beat Boston a year ago, who got to an Easter Conference final, who ran into Ovechkin on a mission and lost out to those guys. But there are also guys on that roster who have been asked this question in the past before on whether or not they are playoff performers, right? Well, that qu the question's being magnified today. And, Tim, I'm trying to think why this happened. And I don't want to completely disrespect Columbus, okay? I understand. They're a really good eight seed. They're a good eight seed. They also had to get in by the skin of their damn teeth mm -hmm. on, like, the third last day of the season. But, they're, listen, Bobrovsky gives you goaltending like that. Any team has a chance to win a playoff series. This guy's a 932 save percentage in the series. And a guy who everyone thought was a he joke. He was really good, but he did not steal the series. No, I don't think he stole this. Here's my theory. Columbus played this, better. See, I don't know about that. Uh, here's my theory. Here's my theory. All right, I'm listening to your theory. I mean, Jack Edwards kind of went down this road yesterday with us in studio, voice of the Boston Bruins on Nesson. What adversity did Tampa face this year? Yeah, well, they had some significant injuries throughout the year. But they, they, and they just kept winning. Like, like, they just filled holes. And they kept winning, and they kept winning. And they kept, it felt easy. Game one, they're up 3 nothing. It feels easier. That goal by Nick Foligno in the middle of the second period in game one. Game one. Your Lars Eller moment in game three a year ago between Columbus and Washington. The fine line. That was the moment where you end the series and you rip out the heart of Columbus. No, turnover McDonough, Foligno the other way, it's 3-1. Vasilevsky doesn't give him another big save in the series. Yeah. Not one. Stamkos doesn't give him another big goal in the series. Is that your Vesna Trophy winner? Oh, congratulations. You're going to win the Vesna. Everyone's about, laughing at about, the organization right now. How about now. your Hart Trophy Congratulations, winner. Kucherov. You're going to win the Hart Trophy. Everyone's going to be snickering when you walk up to get, that, to get the award on stage in Vegas in a couple of months, but whatever. This, I think it's very simple what happened here, Tim. Mm -hmm. They thought it was going to be so easy. And then they went up 3-0, and they thought even more it was going to be three, very easy. And it wasn't. And they couldn't get it out of second gear. I think it's very simple. Columbus are losing in five in the next round to whoever they play. Hold on a second here. Whoever they play. Boston or the Leafs. A John, by the way, a John Tortorella Leafs media series would be one of the most hilarious things I've ever seen. <laughs> yes. Topic for another day. Leafs have their hands full. But this Columbus team ain't that. All right, I'm going to give you they, they don't live that life. Tampa Bay Lightning got lazy about it. They don't live that life. They don't live that life. They don't live that life. Man's got to step up at some point, Tim. And Tampa Bay didn't. That team knows what it's like to, to win in the postseason. We've seen it recently. They got lazy. Tell them again, rude boy. They got lazy. They didn't respect their opponent. They went up 3 uh, nothing. They were going to pack it in. Uh, Guess what, Jack? Nick Foligno. Boom. Now we got a series. Cannons to the left of me. Cannons to the right of me in Columbus. They didn't know what to do. Nobody could give him anything. Victor Hedman's an important player. I understand that. You can lose Hedman and Stamkos, and you should beat that team in six. I'm sorry. Mercenaries all over that roster that are thinking about free agency and that's it, and you get work like that? That's a joke. That Columbus team's out in five next round. Guarantee it. And this Tampa thing's going to look even worse when that happens. This is all on Tampa. I give all the credit to their demise to themselves. See you next year. Good luck with it. I got two stats for you. Shoot. Now that you're done. All three teams who have previously swept a number one seed in a best of seven series have gone on to win the Stanley Cup. Repeat that, please. All three teams who have previously swept a number one seed in a best of seven series mm -hmm. have gone on to win the Stanley Cup. Boy, that stat's going to have a problem when they lose in five next round. <laughs> it is. The other stat that I want to give you, Sid Sixero, 
is that the President's Trophy winner now in the last 11 years has gone out in the first round three times. Wow. Won the Stanley Cup once. Once. I repeat, President's Trophy winners have won one Stanley Cup and gone out in the first round three times in the last 11 years. Just thinking about this because I watch a bunch of different sports and I love a bunch of different sports, sometimes the perspective of watching other sports is important. Why is it that in the NBA where you also see best of sevens and in baseball I think it's a little bit different because if you've made the postseason you're a really good team. Not many teams make the postseason. But in one versus eight, basketball and hockey, we see repeatedly hockey teams win at eight and you'll never see it in the NBA, right. or at least rarely. I wouldn't put baseball rarely in there. I know some of you are tweeting with baseball. Baseball's so weird. Well, I, would, I wouldn't put baseball in the baseball, category. you have to be good to even get Just a to wild get card. To, correct. It's right? a, I think it's a different. You can play 500 hockey different, and get the eight seed. Different kettle of fish. I agree. Yep. And the reason is, from my position, in the NBA, the league makes it harder once you get into the postseason. Both games change remarkably, right? The NBA makes it harder for the lesser knowns to be able to overcome skill. In the NHL, for some reason, they make it easier for the lesser knowns to muddy the waters, to get down and dirty, and find a way to win. Is this good for the National Hockey League that their President's Trophy winner means relatively nothing? Are you, are you approaching this from an officiating standpoint? I'm approaching it from an officiating standpoint. I'm, a, I'm, I'm approaching it from a grit, grind. Like, we all, as Canadians, respect those who bring the lunch bucket. Right. We respect the... The Oilers run to the Stanley Cup Finals as an eighth. The Calgary Flames run to the Stanley Cup Final as an eighth. Like, there, it is in hockey lore. But what you're doing is allowing teams with less skill to muster up a way to take down the teams that have obviously more skill. See, and is that a good thing for the National Hockey League? See, I don't think it happens. I don't think it's the best thing, but I, don't, I think it's less about officiating and more about the reality of this sport. Like, I, I, I never hear people talk about the fact that Sidney Crosby and guys like McDavid, these are your best players, some of the best players in the world. I don't care where you finish in the standings. When you get to playoff time, those forwards are still playing only 33% of the time. Right. And a goalie plays 100% of the time. 100% of the time. And can steal series. But if you're, exactly. And if you have, you can't get Marc-Andre Fleury out of that crease unless you run him. <laughs> right. right? Yeah. But I know full well Austin Matthews is only playing 18 to 20 minutes. Right. Right. And sometimes less than that under Mike Babcock. So I just think the nature of the hockey beast lends to all of this. We like this is stunning, but this isn't. This is hockey in the postseason. We've seen some wild stuff. And again, if your if your best forwards only play so much, every team has a shot against anyone else unless you face that kind of goalie. Yeah. I think it's less about officiating and more about the the sport of hockey and what it entails. From a, t from a time standpoint, your, the, your forwards don't play that much. They just don't. But now, is that, if a coach wants to play a guy 30 minutes a night, feel free. you know if you're watching the NBA Finals, you're going to get the best players in the world. And they're going to be playing 46 minutes a night. And in hockey, minutes a night. you're not going to see that all the if, time. If they play up front, you're not. No. If they're defensemen, they play 30 minutes. If they're goalie, they don't, they don't. No, no. I'm saying you're going to get the best players in the game in the NBA Finals. In the NHL Stanley yeah, Cup Finals. Normally, yeah. You're Probably not going to get the best players in the game. Not all the time. I don't know, I'm a big Alex Tuck guy in Vegas. <laughs>